All right, the next young man I've, I've known uh, now for a couple of years because I taught him. He's one of the, the few kids that I taught that has come out for cross country since coming back to the classroom. And I remember, um, you know, last year in school, we weren't in person until the second half. And even then, uh, we were all in the same desks all day long here at the middle school. And uh, one day I said to him, you know, Elijah, are you, are you thinking about, you ought to come out for cross country? And I think his exact answer was, why? Um, <laughs> and uh, he actually lives just down the road from me. So I thought, well, maybe we can get him to, to run some in the summer. But I just dropped it as a, as a passing. And, um, and sure as heck, I, he signed up. I thought, all right, th this will be good for him. He'll, he'll get to know some of the guys on the team before school starts. Start the season off knowing people in the building is always a good thing for a freshman. And then, I'll, I mean, he really latched on to some of, the, uh, some of the older guys, especially up there towards the front of the JV team. And I think that really helped Elijah. And I think that over the course of the season, he kept surprising himself so much to the point that he started surprising me uh, that running his, I think it was like an 1807, was it? At the JV conference meet, uh, he ended up second overall. And that's only because G threw an elbow somewhere with a half mile to go. But uh, Elijah just started running lights out. And when I asked him, you know, what's your plans for the winter? Uh, he, he expects to keep training. And, and I think that has been uh, such a great turn of events from wondering why he would ever think about running cross country to really putting himself out there and, and not being afraid of a sport that some people just um, don't understand. So earning also the top freshman award, Elijah Haven. Come on up, Elijah. Young man, when I saw Elijah a few times this summer, uh, he went from zero to a hundred when it came to his mileage. And I remember saying to him, "Man, you got to be careful. You get injured that way." And what was it after the second meet? Or after the first meet? After Milwaukee, he was in a mood. Uh, stress fracture down in his lower um, lower leg, just above his ankle. Uh, and I'm real glad. I'm actually really glad he got injured then. Uh, because that gave us enough time to get him healed for what was to come next. Had I predicted, would I have predicted what came next? No. Uh, his first race back was Smiley. I put him in the JV race. And it says something when your uh, rivals, a coach from Madison Memorial, came up after watching Elijah win the JV race and came up to me and said, that kid must have been injured now. And I said, yeah, he's only been on a bike the last three weeks. So I had no idea what he was going to do. But when another coach recognizes that this kid needs to be on varsity, and this time warranted it as well. Then he came up to me going into the Portage meet and said, I think I'm just going to run up there with Lucas. I'm like, wow, sure, why not? Go for it. Uh, and there he ran in a bat. I think it was the fastest time of the season there. It was a 16-28. Uh, so it was just a matter of, all right, let's see where the next limit is. And we kept pushing, we kept pushing. We came out and won the conference meet. He, and the most impressive thing about him winning the conference meet wasn't that he did that, but that he, um, he beat a kid that had just beat him seven days prior, or eight days prior. Uh, and pretty soundly, the stricter kid from four. So to come back mentally strong enough to win that meet, on that course really spoke to his, I think, competitiveness. Now that competitiveness got the best of him when we got to the sectional game, unfortunately, because MG had a kid shoot off and run maybe a sub-6400, I don't know, but he shot off and shouldn't have been at the front of the race. And unfortunately, uh, Elijah got a little uh, pulled out by uh, Jack from South Prairie went after that kid. And so when Elijah came up to me after the race and said, Boy, I know exactly where I went wrong. That's all you can ask as a coach. Uh, because that doesn't define his season. What defines his season is how he responds to that particular event. Because his season had too many accolades to uh, be disappointed about. 
earning his first varsity letter, earning top sophomore, and I'll talk about him a little bit more in a bit, uh, Elijah Kabob. <laughs> So he told me like, I don't know, three weeks ago, I've been saying his name wrong for three years. Eighth grade, freshman year, and this year, I'm like, dude, why don't you say something? <laughs> First one's I'm going to give out uh, is most improved. Uh, this can be measured a lot of different ways in cross country. Yes, you can say, hey, this kid dropped the most time. Uh, that's pretty easy. But there is a caveat that the faster you are, the harder it is to run faster. So you can't say a kid dropping from an 18.30 down to a 16.30 isn't any better or worse than a kid going from 25 minutes down to 19 minutes. Those are two totally, you have to look at them totally different. But most improved, I think, impacted not just uh, by time, but by place. Not just by place on our team, but by place in meets. Uh, and it really has jump-started some conversations around what's coming up in the future. Uh, this year, earning most improved. Uh, you didn't have to have a season under your belt before this. Uh, Elijah Ibam. It's okay. So, right, so most improved for... Uh, last year was kind of a metamorphosis year for Elijah. This year has been full-blown butterfly. Uh, he has impressed. Uh, he has turned heads. Uh, I think there was only one race where he didn't run as our top runner. Uh, it was at Mount Horvath and he was dealing with a chest pull, but he still finished, I think, in the top six in the race, uh, top five or six. Uh, Elijah has made running a very large part of his life, uh, and in fact, um, what, what you get sometimes when that happens is they go overboard with it, but Elijah is still willing to listen to reason, uh, and that's a very important trait when it comes to distance training, because rest at certain times of the year are as valuable as running, more so. Uh, so, what's been impressive about Elijah is his networking with other really high-end runners, um, but also the fact that he still knows what's going on on our team. Uh, so that's been a lot of fun to watch. Um, it's kind of a satellite that way when it comes to what's going on around the state, but he also very much is on the ground here. Um, he ended up, I know he's a, again a little disappointed with where he finished at the state meet, but to be second place uh, at the sectional meet that he ran, uh, second place at a, at a meet where we had, uh, like I mentioned before, four or five ranked teams is pretty impressive. And I know that what he raced at the state meet will only drive him to do uh, impressive things next year uh, back up in, well, if it's in there. But Elijah, David, come on up and get your top two. Uh, and I, I, I'm sad to say. 
say it is not. It is tied for our highest finisher ever. Uh, but I think when, when Elijah looks back, I, I don't know if he would have gone into that race and, and told you, I'm going to be the first. I don't, I don't think he would have. I think he would have been thrilled with fourth, fifth, maybe. Um, but I told him earlier on in the year, um, as he started gaining form coming off of the, of the track season with his injury, it, it took a lot of patience on his part this year. Uh, and he's not, that's not his best trick, right? And it's not most high school boys' best trick to be patient. Uh, but he needed to be patient with his fitness. Uh, I knew his work ethic was there. It always has been since probably halfway through your sophomore year, you haven't looked back, right? What was it? The, uh, the spinal <coughs> I believe your sophomore year. You know, a lot of folks don't talk about this, but Elijah's best time your freshman year was 1807. And um, and it wasn't until sophomore year you had an injury, I think. So you had to run JV at this time of year, if I remember And he came out and just decided, I, I don't remember if you won it or you came darn close to it, right? But running at the front of the race does something to some people. It makes them believe that's where they should be no matter what race they're in. And I think from that moment on, Elijah believed he should be at the front of every single race. And he darn well was uh, after that point. Uh, now, it took him a little while this season to be at the front of the team, and I think that made him better. I think that made him hungrier, and I think that paid off dividends when we got to the state team. Because when he came around at you guys were heading up that hill in about a thousand to go or so. I think the light clicked on again and said, I should be up there. And if you followed online at all, his arrow would turn green and drop four places in the last 600 meters or so. Uh, and that's not a course where you're going to just turn it into an all out sprint, but that's what Elijah did. Elijah has helped lead our team uh, not only place wise, performance wise, but also, to some degree, personality-wise. We've had good runners before. We've had very good runners before. I'm not sure many of them would tell you, I am a runner first. And Elijah has been one of the first ones to come in and say, I am a runner first. And that's his personality. I think if he was to describe himself, he is a runner. And I might say, he's a darn good runner. Uh, taking third over on the state, winning his second conference title, third conference title, excuse me, second sectional, no, first sectional title. Uh, and three times first team all conference. I think so. And first team all state. Uh, I don't know how you build a better resume. Uh, I'm impressed, uh, but I would really appreciate Say goodbye to every especially if you play something you love. The lead prospect gave me a purpose. The purpose to become a better person than I was before. And I believe I've accomplished that goal. The witness to my person who It's no Five years ago, I didn't have any real friends. My math teacher was a partner. He just said I don't cross my fingers. I'm not sure what went through my mind that day, but I decided to give it a try. On my first day of practice, I could run three miles. <coughs> but it didn't matter, because for the first time in my life, I felt like I mattered. I was in a place where I couldn't fail, just showing how the felt that I was winning. From that day on, I was put. I looked to the, looked to the other classmen like they were gods. It made my life's mission to be like to be like them one day. Now four years later, I'm here. Being the person I always wanted to become. Do I feel do I, do I feel like I'm still being a human being senior? I hope that I can talk to this in a positive way. So before I go, I wanted to leave you with a piece of advice. What are you doing guys tonight? Take a moment to close your eyes. Think about the biggest accomplishment you want to achieve in high school. The picture I have. Imagine, imagine.
there's no motions to feel on, on that day. They can every detail, the sounds, the smell, everything. You know, open your eyes. Make it happen. Don't stop until it does. If you give everything, and I need everything, it will happen. The journey won't be easy, but that's what makes it fun. So enjoy it. And make every second count. And like the great poor one said, reach for the stars so we can fall when we might not cloud.